How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 13, and we have the biggest game of our season in front of us. Ball State is number 23 in the country and is sitting at 8 and 2. We are 21st in the country and are also sitting at 8 and 2. And we are both in the MAC. We are both in the same division. And right now, we are tied for that division, the MAC West. We're both 8 and 2 with 6 and 1 in conference. So this game will likely determine which uh, team from the Western Division goes to the conference championship. So we need to win this. Not only that, but it's uh, a big ranked matchup for us. And if we want to stay ranked, we'll have to win this game. Sitting at 8-2, and two, can we go to 9-2 and two is the real question. Let's take a look at the rest of the top 25 polls. Nebraska is still our final undefeated team. They'll be playing a number 19 Minnesota this week, so a chance for them to lose with two games to play in the regular season. Any other ranked matchups? LSU will play Auburn. Florida plays Coastal, and the Chanticleers are down in 14th here, 8-3 and three on the season, uh, just a year after we've left them. That seems to be it for ranked matchups besides us and Ball State, so... A lot of chance for chaos, but not a whole lot of chance for teams necessarily or ranked teams to lose. How about this? Alabama ranked top uh, 25 after getting a win against Mississippi State, but they're 6-4 and four on the season. And then Tennessee in front of them, 6-5 and five on the season. The fact that we're ranked only a couple spots higher is a little bit insulting, but also they're playing much more difficult opponents than us in the MAC, so I can't be too surprised. Our Heisman watch is Brandon Brown still leading the way he's been doing it all season long and he's been getting a ridiculous amount of yards running the ball only 21 carries for him last week against TCU which is a pretty low amount but he still picks up 111 yards and now he's up to almost 1700 on the season with 23 touchdowns we do have a little bit of recruiting still to do a thousand points available to us again no home games available so anybody ready for a visit is just going to have to come on the bye week, which is kind of a shame, but what's, well, you know, where we'll send Lance James. We do get a complimentary visit there, uh, so that's nice. And a visit is better than no visit, even if it is during a bye week. Uh, Vince Young, the 63 overall center, has locked us out, and I don't think that we can unlock him. Uh, even if we could, I don't know. Do we want to? He's only 63 overall. I don't think it's worth it. So unfortunately, we won't be able to to pick him up uh still in a battle with the good kicker mike williams the wide receiver we're still fighting our rivals there 99 percent locked both teams with a visit so this is just going to come down to the off season unless we get locked out before that if we go to our top overalls we are looking okay it looks like lsu has kind of dropped the hammer down on us again here with the 79 overall cornerback frank blair Although we already picked up the 80 overall tackle in Drew Anderson. So that's a huge boost to our offensive line for next year. Defensive end-wise, Avery Rawls we're in the lead with. And it looks like we could get him to commit. Ball State actually has him coming to visit at this game. So another reason why the stakes are so high this week. Uh, just the storylines can't write themselves any better. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Troy Carter, 76 overall defensive end. Looks like he's coming to us. Clinton Whitfield were fighting with UCLA and we still have a visit there so if we can keep it close into the offseason there's a chance you know we're not gonna have a whole lot of guys that I think that we'll sink points into so uh, we'll probably just go nuts with what we can get and I'm just gonna give our remaining at a thousand points just to the two best players quarterback is tempting here but I don't know if James Haynes is going to be the best quarterback available to us he's only 63 overall and he can't he's incredibly inaccurate 67 throw accuracy is just not going to work so deandre jennings the free safety instead is going to get the points now if you didn't see the version 15 update video uh, first off pause this video go down to the description click the link to that and watch that because the mac was updated in the most recent uh college football revamped update which means that we get new uniforms and a new field and while unfortunately we won't be able to play with those the rest of the season, we're still excited for next year. Really wish that we had a home game left this year because the gray field looks awesome to me. Instead, we'll just be wearing the away uniforms a couple of times. Our default away is silver, white, and gray. Uh, and we're just going to keep it for the first time. It's new to us still. 
So we're going to go default away against Ball State. And Ball State has some fun uh, uniforms. I do like the mascot on the side of their helmet. And again, because it's a new uniform for us, we'll let Ball State just wear their standard home uniforms in this one. They are a 79 overall with a 79 offense and an 82 defense. They just barely have the edge over our 77 overall. Uh, could be a little bit difficult. If we come out and execute, we can definitely take care of business. But if we uh, are struggling on offense, I'm a little bit worried. Rankings-wise, I think we are definitely better than them. They are running the ball better than us, but we're passing the ball much better. Uh, we're scoring a few more points and getting well, a few less yards, but the points matter more than the yards. And defensively, they're actually surprisingly good. Top 20 in all four categories. We are also top 20 in all four categories. And again, the rush and pass are kind of flipped for us, but we are first in the nation in yards allowed and rushing yards allowed and second in the nation in points allowed, holding our opponents to less than 16 per game. So that's really big. Uh, big visits for these guys. Avery Rawls, again, is somebody that we are very focused on getting. So we'll hope for the best there. And they're top players in that mid-60 overall range, uh, defensive tackle, wide receiver, and a right end. So pretty spread out across the field for them. Hopefully nothing too big. The real question is, do they have injuries? And they do uh, quite a few of them. A left tackle, a left guard, and a left end all out. So the uh, offensive and defensive line is certainly going to be taking a little bit of a hit there. Here we are in Muncie, Indiana. On a beautiful late fall day here. Uh, Schumann Stadium? Kind of going to assume that's how you say that. Hoping to get the win. This is a big one. Definitely going to be televised nationally, I got to imagine. A uh, very important match and game as we go tails on the coin toss and get the heads. So they're going to elect to kick the ball off, which means our offense will start the ball first. And this is incredibly risky knowing how much better our rush offense can be than our pass offense. But we're going to come out and pass on first down. Try to expose these guys, throw the quick curl to Serge Mitchell, and he's going to hold on to that one. Just like that first play of the game, we get 12 yards. Anything that we can do to open up the running game is going to be big in this one. Hopefully, we're able to run all over Ball State, and hopefully our defense does a good job like they have been all season, but you never know how these ones are going to go. Wagner's first carry goes for six, and we'll go to him again here on second and four. Looking towards the outside, he's got a couple of blocks and he has the speed to get the corner and seven yards for the first down. Already across midfield on this drive. Question is, when am I going to make the mistake that screws it up? Stepping back to pass, throwing a tough one. Wilson holds on to it through the contact. Safety was playing a little bit too soft and we picked on him there. And now Ed Bird will start the game two of two. Solid completions as well. Not the easiest throws, but he gets it done. Jerome Simmons on his first carry is going to get a few yards there. Not as many as I would have hoped, but always moving forward is positive. Very curious to see how this one works. I'm going to go the exact same play, just the other direction and with Jesse Wagner, and we'll see if we can burn them on this one. There's a gap up the middle. I didn't quite hit it a little stutter step. Could have been more than three yards, but we are in the third down now. It's a running game, I think, that has carried us most of the season, though, so we're going to stick with him. Jerome Simmons, more of a power back in on this crucial third and four. And a hole opens up up the middle, so we cut it back inside, and it's a first down on the 10-yard pickup. Absolutely beautiful, and now I'm thinking, let's go to the air here, see if we can catch him out. Neff's not necessarily a big fan of my play call, but look at this. Plenty of space, and then we throw it back across the middle. That was okay. Well... That was stupid. I just, every once in a while in my head, can't remember that Ed Bird is not a quarterback that we can get outside the pocket comfortably. So that's a problem, and this could be a problem. It's a great run, eight or nine yards, but... Oh, I thought it was going to be a holding. It's an offside, so a free play for us. We will definitely take that. Well, that could end up hurting us, but I think I'd rather have a second and five than a third and three... As long as Simmons can get three or more yards on this play, it's absolutely worth it. Up the middle he goes, and, well, he's just going to get two. So third and three once again. Uh, don't want to settle for a field goal here. I know this isn't necessarily the smartest decision, but we are going to step back. Looking to throw it. Wagner's open, but we just go to Nixon. He's going to get the block. The timing was perfect, but just barely ran into the running back. 
So while I'll say it disappointedly, it is just a first and goal. But a big at pickup inside the five. Can we get into the end zone? Giving it to Simmons. He kind of shed that tackle. So he only lost a yard. That could have been a whole lot worse. That was a great blitz from Ball State on that one. And I'm a little bit worried here. Second and goal. Looks like we could be running right into him here, but we'll just give it to Wagner and let him try to do something. Two-yard rush. We're a little bit closer than we were on first down, but it's third and goal again. Definitely don't feel comfortable passing in this situation. So what can we do? Oh, I'm going to flip this one and hope for the best. This is awfully weird. Trying to catch these guys off guard. Giving it to Wagner on the counter. Third and goal. Not a whole lot of space, and he's going to lose or... Apparently gain a yard. It's fourth and goal. I don't know what to do here. We'll see what coach says. And from the two-yard line, he wants us to go for it. So it's fullback time. We'll give it to Courtney Smith and hope for the best. Can he get the two yards? No, he's short. No, he's in. I don't know about that spot at all. The refs may be paid off by uh, our athletic department. Ball must have just barely crossed the plane there and... That's exactly what I fear. They're going to take a look at it. I think this one gets overturned. And Ball State's offense will get the ball at about the inch line. Awfully close, but it didn't feel like he was in. Just not a good enough push from the fullback there. And that's, yeah, that seems well short to me. What do they say? Dang it. Would have loved to have those points, but it just didn't seem right. Very surprised that uh, they overturned it. So the ball almost already in the end zone. Can our defense, which has been so great this season, can they get the safety? No. Option keeper, quarterback, moving downfield. He's going to pick up almost 20 yards. And just like that, Ball State's out of danger. They're going to go in the hurry up here. And we'll see if anything can happen. He scrambles that time and finds pressure in the backfield. Surprised he got back to the line of scrimmage, but I would almost call that a sack. Well, second and 10. I'm just hoping the defense gets a stop. It doesn't have to be perfect as this one is an option out towards the edge. The pitch is there. The tackle can't be made in the backfield. So instead of a loss of a yard, it's a gain of two. And that play brings up a pretty pivotal third and eight. Uh, QB draw, that's not going to go anywhere. Very questionable decision making from Ball State and their quarterback here. And he looks like he's a little banged up on the play. So we get the ball back with decent field position and a chance to score the first points of the game. And if we make the catch here, if we get the completion, it should be the final play of the first quarter. Trying to get it up. Oh, that's lucky. That one's not a pick six. Thought I had the tight end, but just got hit as we were throwing. Just a back spasms for that Ball State quarterback. So could be a lot worse. He'll be back in shortly. So we'll give it to Wagner on second and 10 and just let him pick up almost all of it. And that's going to be the end of our first quarter. So at the end of one, all tied up. We were inches away from scoring. Never really had the chance to get the safety uh, afterwards, but looks like we're doing okay. Our defense did a good job of holding them. They picked up a first down and then went three and out. And as we start this second quarter... We're going to go play action pass. Very risky for us. Hoping for the best. Feels like the pressure could be coming. B might be open. This is a tough throw. Serge Mitchell can't come down with it. Almost got him there in time, but it's incomplete. So the defense will have to come back out onto the field. Pass with the immediate 15-yard pass. The incompletion. The three-yard pickup brings up a third and seven here. They're trying to get across midfield for the first time in this game, and they have not converted on their one third down attempt. They'll step back to pass. Quarterback has a guy over the middle. It's complete, and that'll move the chains. They're going to go back into this hurry up. I'm expecting the handoff. Quarterback, triple option there once again, makes the pitch. His man's going to get a couple of yards there as well, so the option, a big part of Ball State's game right now. A little fun fact for you guys. Ball State... Uh, the same ball that you see on the side of like mason jars. A uh, company made a bunch of money off of mason jars or something like that and then made a, uh, a university. I don't actually know if that's true, but it sounds right. <laughs> so hopefully I'm not out here telling lies. They picked up a big first down there. This one will run towards the edge. Defense gets there, stands him up, and will only allow him to get two yards. 
Byron Miner just averaging three yards a carry. As they step back to pass this time, quarterback releases it quick. That looked like it was either a curl or a little out route, and it's good for 14 yards. Defense definitely back on their heels right now. Need to get some momentum to turn this drive around. This one could have been picked off. Just can't quite get the jump on it, and it's a first down. Good catch through the contact for Marquise Brooks. Well, they've left the hurry up for a little bit. We'll see. Second and two. Well, just like that, they're inside the tent, so... We're going to hop in because we don't want to miss the touchdown. And I'm curious to see, can the defense get a stop? A toss out towards the edge is going to lose a couple of yards. Toss plays just don't work in this game, so I could have told you that was going to happen. And our defense has finally gotten them back into a third down spot here. Third and five from inside the 10. They have a first down they can pick up, so it's not just the end zone. And this one deflected away in the end zone. Looks like Ball State's going to score first. But at least it's not a touchdown. Just the field goal attempt here. Not a very long one. A 21-yarder. Should be a chip shot. Actually, a what, no, a 16-yarder. Even more of a chip shot. Easily through. And they'll take the first lead of the game with 3.22 left on the clock. Wagner's going to try a run here. We'll see if we can get him a little bit towards the edge. He's got decent blocks, but I got a little bit too close to that D-end. So just a gain of a yard. Time to show him a little bit of a different look here. We're going to have Ed Bird on the read option. We need uh, more threats available to us, and that one worked perfectly. That's a seven-yard pickup, but it does put us in a third down as we'll be trying to get another completion. Tough throw. Mitchell comes down with that one. Oh, that was a risky throw, but it worked out in our favor. It moves the ball 26 or so yards downfield, and we get across midfield for the first down. Absolutely crucial there. We're nearing just two minutes left in the half. We'll give it to Simmons up the middle. Just a yard for him, and the clock will keep moving. And I think that we're going to go deep again. But I'm not sure if Ferguson's the right play. Could be looking for John Wilson. Or we'll just check it down. Give it to Wagner. Threw that ball late. Really put him in a bad spot. That's on me. He could have gotten badly hurt there. That makes it third and nine. And Jerome Simmons is going to have to come in for that one. Bad throw from me. Looking for the out route here. That's going to be picked off. No, Broussard comes down with it. Oh, gosh. We got lucky there. The defensive backs for Ball State have had multiple opportunities to create a turnover and just thankfully for us haven't been able to do it. That run to Wagner is going to be a loss of a yard. And we have a minute and 15 now to work with. All three of our timeouts, so I'm not worried about the clock just yet. The last thing I want to do is give them time to take the lead at the end of the half. I feel like we stepped out of bounds there. Nobody was getting open. Well, we got a long ways to go to pick up the first down here, so we'll just send them deep and see if anybody can get open here. Tough one. I hit the wrong button. It's incomplete anyways because we're getting hit as we throw. Fourth and 11. And coach wants us to go for this, but... I just don't think that we can. It's a 45-yard field goal attempt. Trying to tie it up. We got all the power on it. Do we have the distance? We do. It's a new season long for the kicker, whose name is honestly escaping re me right now. But it's 3-3 three to three with a minute left in the half. We disobeyed coach there. But it means it's a tie ball game. And I just don't know about going for it on 4th and 11. Um, so... Just real happy that that one made it. Quarterback looking deep, throws it up, has a man. Wow, big catch on the sideline there. D.D. Hass having himself a little bit of a game. 46 seconds for Ball State. They'll be looking to get out of bounds. That's going to be a big tackle for us. They're going to be forced to take their first time out with 42 seconds left. Honestly, if we hold them to another field goal, I think I'm fine with that. They do, though, get the ball to start the third quarter. So we would be in a little bit of danger. Defense gets the sack, and that's going to be the second timeout for Ball State. It's third and long. Just one of three on their third down conversions today. We know this one's going to be a pass. Will the defense be ready for it? Something over the middle, something out towards the edge. There's the out route, and he's just a little bit too open. 16 yards there. That one moves the chains and stops the clock as he gets out of bounds. 34 seconds, one timeout. They step back to throw once again. DD Haas finds a man open. He's going to catch it. 
He's going to get the first down, which will stop the clock temporarily, but he's a little bit shaken up on the play. That could hurt quite a bit. Yeah, and that forces them to make the substitution. So instead of going in the hurry up and getting the playoff immediately, the clock is running here. Now 20 seconds left in the half, throwing for the end zone. It's caught, but it's short of the line again. 17 seconds left. I really wish we were taking timeouts here. They're going to go in the hurry up. And you got to imagine, well, I feel like they might throw this on first down. Plenty of time as the clock starts to wind. A sack would be crucial here, but he's going to go for the corner of the end zone, and it is tipped away. A chance at the interception, but it's incomplete. Second and goal. Still one timeout for Ball State. Will they just run it here? It would seem like almost the smart play, but we'll see if they go for it. Looks like it's going to be that triple option. Quarterback keeps it and gets into the end zone with just a few seconds on the clock. And that really hurts because we're almost certainly going to return this kick here. And if we do return the kick, it's going to mean that we have no time to work with. Because eight seconds, we could run two plays potentially. Uh, but I don't think we'll get that luxury. Let's see. Please don't use all eight seconds on this. I want to give a chance. It's not a touchback. Gosh dang it. Blocks winding down. It's a great return. At least he got to the 35. Three seconds and a Hail Mary. You never know. Ooh, a forearm fracture for uh, Miner. I think that's one of their running backs. He'll be out for the season. And we're going to be looking to throw this one deep. I'm going to keep Wilson and Wagner back to help block and give us as much time here. And they did literally nothing. We had two guys coming free downfield that if Ed could have gotten the ball far enough, would have been completed maybe for a touchdown. But... The offensive line turns into Swiss cheese at the wrong moment. We get sacked 10-3 as we go into the locker room. And they get the ball, so a chance for them to make it a two-score game. We're held out of the end zone in that entire first half, which is disastrous. The offense got close, inches away even, but the refs overturn our touchdown call. And we can't find the end zone for the rest of the half, so got to turn that around. Defense is doing okay, but too many of those plays where they just uh, out routes on the sideline. Uh, we got our work cut out for us. We can win this game, but everything's going to have to go well. Let's see what Ball State does to open up this third quarter. Take the touchback, and they go at the triple option on first down and lose four yards. That's a great start for the defense. I want to see a three and out, but I'm worried about the uh, out routes right now. Second and 14, almost expecting them to pass it towards the sideline man goes in motion this is going to be another option and again a loss no it's they say he got a yard but it's still third and a mile defense has to know that a pass is coming here so what can they do to get the stop two wide receivers up towards the top the running back running out there they throw the screen one block is in place but it's not enough and it's fourth and five so the defense comes out and gets the stop, and I'm going to see if we can make them pay. No, really, truly deep safeties here. I'm going to heave one up for Surge. No. Our offensive line can't give us any time to throw today. Who knows? Maybe we're lucky, and that one would have been intercepted, but I really do feel like he was about to come free on that. So a big shame, a waste of a play. And on second and 10, well, we give it to Wagner, and he runs for seven yards. Third and three here. Uh, I'm really tempted to go for this on fourth down if we don't pick it up, but we'll see what happens as we're going to try to run the ball. Blocking more than sufficient as Wagner's just going to weave his way around. Makes the safety miss, and he gets 16 yards. Normally, they, AI, and myself call this play on a uh, third down. We're going to do it on a first down. The slip screen, give it to Jerome Simmons, and Simmons is going to lose two yards. Close to working, but not quite. They are playing the safeties deep on this one, so probably not going to be able to go to Serge Mitchell, but we could oh, go to John Wilson. It's intercepted. I should have known with this game that a linebacker was going to sky for the pick. If I wait another second, I think that's a huge gain for Wilson. Ball State really bringing the pressure. So they're going to take over with great field position. And a chance to increase the lead, but the triple option just not working so far in this half for him. They'll lose a yard there. Quarterback looks real frustrated. Pass just averaging two yards per carry now. So he really hasn't had a whole lot of good chances since his first carry. They'll hand it off up the middle, gain a four, but it brings up a third and six. Good chance for the defense to hold on third and six. They'll go over the middle, and I knew that was going to happen. 
Uh, 22 was pressed up there. He tried to get the jam off the line, but just didn't work. So he gives up the first down. DD has 12 of 15 passing. So there's three minutes left in this third quarter, and they're moving the ball. If we go down two scores at this point, it might be real difficult when we've been held to three for uh, up to this point. Pass continues to try to run, and we do continue to stop it. So there are bright spots. That one, I don't know if that was a, a draw or if he was scrambling, but we get the tackle for a loss. They're in 11. Every once in a while, these things go in our favor. Will it this time? Coverage playing pretty soft right now. They're going with the screen. Blockers out in front. Is it enough? No. Fourth and one, but they're in field goal range with that 11-yard screen. And even worse, they're going to go for it. They want the kill shot. They want to go up two touchdowns. So it's going to be another triple option. Quarterback short. It's a turnover on downs. He gets just to the line of scrimmage. Oh my gosh. A huge momentum swing. They for sure could have gone up 10 points, but instead they gamble. And it does not pay off. So a chance now for us to tie this one up as we give the ball to Wagner and on first down. So, so close to breaking that one for a big run. He gets the first down carry, though. That gives us our ninth first down of the game, and we'll be seeing if anything good can happen through the air. Going to go with the check down. We get it to Wagner right as he's hit. A couple of bad throws we've made to him. See what we can do on the counter. Wagner's running has been really solid for us in this game. And it's going to be even better. Wagner in open space. I don't think he has the speed to go the distance, but it's 48 yards into the red zone as he cuts it back inside on the counter and picks up some incredible downfield blocks. This is our chance now to tie it up. We've gotten inside the red zone. Almost inside the 15. Can we get ourselves a first and goal? Jerome Simmons. Takes the four-yard carry on first down. And we're going to go Ed Bird here potentially with the read option on second down. He's going to keep it. He's got plenty of space, but he's not quite going to get the blocks. And Ed Bird bringing the hammer, just trucking through some guys for that first and goal. Five yards to Pater. Can we tie this one up is the question. We'll give it to Simmons. Jerome with some blockers is going to get most of the way there. Second and goal now from the two. The first time we were in this area, though, Ball State got us with the goal line stand. Can we do it this time? Robinson will come in. He's going to take his first carry of the game, and Pat goes into the end zone. Pending the extra point, this one is tied up near the end of the third. Got to see this extra point go through the uprights, though. I'm a little bit worried we miss it. Kick is up. That looked good to me, and the refs agree. 10 all. Well, this is a bad turn of events right there. Already losing some of that momentum as Ball State returned the kickoff to about the 41. So a short field for their offense. Quarterback has to throw it away on first down, though. Seems like maybe he's had enough of uh, taking hits. Just wanted a play where he didn't get hit by one of our defenders. And that time he hands it off to Marquise Brooks, who gets hit pretty early. Gain of one, it makes it third and nine as they will come out again in this hurry up, trying to push the tempo and catch our defense out of position. It's worked a couple of times this game, but not all that much. This is going to be a little play action, and there's the sack. A loss of seven, the defense holds again. And that might be the end of the third quarter. Will they get the playoff in time? No. So it'll be a punted ball to us to start the fourth quarter. But just absolutely phenomenal there in that third quarter. Henry with the big stop to force the turnover on downs. Wagner with the big run to get us into position. And then Pat Robinson finishes it off with the touchdown. It's all tied up. Just 5.55 left to play in this game. And we have possession of the football, which is always good news in a tie game late in the game. Handing it off to Jesse Wagner on first down. He's just going to get a yard. And just to continue to keep them on their toes a little bit, we'll look to throw on second and nine. And I'm going to throw that curl route. Give it to Serge. I know that he's going to hold on to that 90% of the time. It gives us the first down. And we'll give it to Wagner again here. Up the middle on the dive play. Blocking is okay. We get four yards out of it. And again, we'll look at a chance deep. I want to get a nice deep ball, but it's got to be really open. And our offensive line has to give us time. If they don't, I go check down. 
finally finds Zach Wilson on one of those, and he gets us the first down. Across midfield into Ball State territory now on this drive is huge. Simmons doesn't have the speed to outrun that man. That linebacker was hurtling over everybody. He would not be stopped. Not for sure that play was going to go for a lot, but we get stopped at the line of scrimmage, and they want to bring pressure. We're going to throw it on him. This is risky, but it could work. You never know. I'm sending Mitchell deep. This is a touchdown for Serge Mitchell if we can get the pass off just in time. Ball is oh, in his hands, but the defender just strips it out. Man, when they bring pressure, the offensive line pretty much crumbles. That time almost uh, threw it immediately. And even then we still got hit as we're throwing. Big throw there to Jonathan Nixon. That moves the chains. And I know that you could go back to earlier in the game when I said that the toss play almost never works, but we're going to try it to Pat Robinson anyways. If he can get those two blocks and get north, yeah, something good can happen. And I'll say four yards is very good for a toss play in this game. Second and six. We'll go with the counter. Jerome in. Jesse's stamina must be low. We're not seeing him much at this stage. And Jerome pushes off a tackler. I don't think that Jesse Wagner's doing that. He gets five yards after the contact in the backfield. That one gives us a third and one, and we'll give it to Pat Robinson again as he'll have to break a tackle, but he doesn't have the strength. One-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and he loses a yard. It's fourth and two. I think we're kicking the field goal here. But coach wants us to go for it. I think I got to agree, and we're going triple option. Simmons and Bennett are the two options that I have. Ed Bird doesn't need him, though. That's the first down. I'm going to pitch it. It's a risky one. Oh, man. If the block would have held there, it would have been a whole lot more. Ernest Bennett, seven yards. And it moves the chains for us. So we are uh, inside two minutes and 40 seconds on the game clock. Again, giving it to Simmons. Just got to keep running the ball. Slow down to keep with the blockers. And that's another first down. First and goal. Maybe strategic from Ball State to let us pick that up. Only so much time that we can take off the clock at this point. And wait, 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 wait. There is a guy with blue skin on the left side for Ball State. One of the defensive backs. His skin is freaking blue, dude. They got Smurfs out here. Blue man group. He's chasing us down. Get off me. Robinson breaks the tackle. But he loses five yards in the process. Well, that seems unfair. A new glitch, but the intimidation factor alone allows them to drop us for a big loss second and goal from a long ways out b could be open that's gonna be picked off oh oh my goodness what am i doing making that throw head burden out nine of 20 what am i thinking there that was never gonna work i'm lucky it's not intercepted and i don't know if anything that we can do here will work but we'll try it anyways stepping back on the play action just going to heave one back in the end zone. Mitchell comes down with it through the contact. He ran his route and just kind of stood underneath the goalpost and puts it in the right spot. He goes up, hangs onto it through the contact, and we'll take the touchdown lead here late in the fourth. The extra point is good, and we'll see. Do they do anything to start their drive? I was kind of hoping that they wouldn't and we could sim through it and not have to worry, but the stress levels will be increasing throughout this drive as it's second and one. And there's the first down as they're nearing midfield, a minute and 17 and three timeouts to work with for Ball State. Gotta hope to get the stop here, but we know the passing's gonna come in rapid fire here. Quarterback again over the middle. This one, good news for us. He's caught it, but then he takes a few seconds to get tackled. And doesn't get the first down, which means the clock will keep running. Now going under a minute left in the game. Again, we're still up a touchdown. But they still have all three timeouts. Can we get a stop at all? No. There's another completion and a first down, but they take their first timeout. I think most people would agree that that's a terrible time to take a timeout. Uh, right after you get the first down, the clock stops anyways, so... Uh, if you just run a quick play, even if it doesn't work well, or even if you just run it there, then you take your time out. And now they're in trouble because Haas has been sacked. It's second and 14. And Ball State just has one timeout left. Oh, no. A sack could be big here. A play like that. They throw it well short of the line again. He's tackled it bound. So the clock continues to roll. It's third and eight. And we are so close to getting the win here. Two stops. It's all we need. We know they'll go for it on fourth down. There's the first one again with the clock moving inside 30 seconds now. And they need a touchdown to force overtime here. 
in the hurry up, but will be enough. 20 seconds. A turnover on downs would end it. This one into the end zone. It's deflected. And with 17 seconds left, we're going to come out with the win. A hard fought battle for sure. And I couldn't even be mad at Ball State if they take the timeout on this one. But we'll just take the knee, force that final timeout. And somehow through all of that, we do manage to make the comeback. How crucial is that turnover on downs where they could have kicked the field goal and potentially have been in a spot to win it because who knows what my decision making would become at that point. But it's going to be enough. We take the knee again and we'll just let the clock burn down here for the final three seconds. And we can walk out of Ball State here. With the win, 17-10 to 10 against another top 25 opponent. And more importantly, that gives us the lead in the division. And with one game left against a pretty bad Northern Illinois, that could punch our ticket into the conference championship game. Absolutely fantastic. Couldn't have gone better. I loved everything about that game. It was close. And most importantly, too, it allowed us to show off some of our new uniforms. Man, in these low-scoring games, every point matters. And I actually think I did a pretty good job with the decision-making today. Uh, you know, taking the field goal instead of going for it, giving us those first points, deciding not to take the field goal late in the game and going for it on fourth down, which led to a touchdown. Uh, while Ball State, I think, made some pretty bad blunders in that regard, and they left a few points on the board. At the end of it, we outrushed them 169-17. to 17. They outpassed us, though, 217-125, to 125, and they did win the turnover battle. Bad interception from me. Maybe a little bit lucky for them. If I wait another half a second, it's a huge gain for us, but... Just the uh, the vertical from that linebacker was unmatched at the time. How about our player of the game? Uh, Serge Mitchell. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. Only four catches, but the game-winning touchdown. And it was an impressive one at that. And then Leon Walters, this cornerback, with two tackles for loss and two sacks on four total tackles. So we are able to get the win against the top 25 team. And I think that might be enough for us to get inside the top 20. We're sitting at 21st. We beat 23. That has to be enough to jump somebody. So we'll advance the week towards our final game of the regular season against NIU. And anything bad. Keith Robertson, a bad quarterback, has gone to Southern Miss. We get a bad corner and Travis Bracken committed. Otherwise, it's a lot of recruiting battles. Frank Blair, that 79 overall cornerback, is ready to visit. We get some XP and we are top 20 number 19 in the country and we get to finish off the regular season on the road but against a five and six niu we could put them five and seven we are favored to win this one they are the higher overall team but we've played against higher overall teams all season long and it's gone pretty well for us so far unfortunately that's gonna have to be the end of this video if you enjoyed it please go down hit the like button it helps the video be seen by a ton more people and if you haven't already please consider subscribing once you've done both of those, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you want to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.